Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds back again. We got a crew talking about summer lures. We're going to talk about top water, some soft plastic, maybe some hard baits, and, uh, and also talk about different types of water, right? There is never going to be just one lure to use for any time or season that's just always going to work. The reason there's more than one lure out there. Uh, but there are some that, that do have a distinct advantage over other lures during certain times of the year, like summer, and going after certain types of species, and depending on the water clarity, you know, because our guys over there like Wyatt in Texas have a little bit different view than uh, some of us in Central Florida versus guys like Richard up in, uh, in Jacksonville to, to Georgia. So welcome, guys. Matt and Yak, you're back. You were, you were frozen earlier. I thought we were going to have a frozen uh, Matt the whole podcast. Uh, some connection issues, but we're all good now. Sweet. Cool. Well, uh, Wyatt, why don't you kick us off since this was uh, your idea? Wyatt's super passionate, always about talking about summertime lures. It's all fired up. Oh, yeah. I, I just like talking about the different presentations you can give because each season presents a new set of opportunities, challenges, different baits to match, things that happen commonly. So with summer, really the big kind of keys to hit on is we're coming out of spring. You've got a lot of small bait fish that showed up in the spring and they're starting to get a little bit larger. Winds are starting to calm down a little bit from the terrible winds we get in the spring. And summer is probably when we have the dirtiest water just because the warm water, I guess it influences more algae blooms or something. Uh, whatever it may be, it seems like the dirtiest water I tend to encounter happens around summertime. So knowing all that, all of my presentations are going to be focused around kind of shallow water fishing. Redfish seem to be the easiest thing to target in the summer. So a lot of times I'm up really shallow. Uh, I'll talk about some other presentations you can give for other species as well. But my main lures that I always have tied on are going to be shallow kind of mid bait, mid sized bait fish presentations. Uh, and I will have some color variances that allow me to fish in some dirty water. And whether that be just a, like a slam shady white, that has got a little bit of sparkle in it or I'll have like that gold digger color that's more kind of imitating like a gold spoon uh, just because you will find a lot of situations where that water's got some tannicness to it or a little bit of sediment in there but you know really just sticking with small bait fish presentations that are kind of getting a little bit larger three to four inch um, minnow presentations uh, I also really like top water in the summer this probably summers I think top water's main season just because it gets so hot the bite window is so focused early in the morning and it's probably the best time of year to be throwing top water because really early in the morning those fish are fired up trying to get that feeding window in before it gets too hot to feed during the middle of the day so that's really like kind of the big keys for me is i'm, I'm just trying to maximize all the conditions and opportunities uh, that summer gives me with all those different presentations so if you could only have one one lure to fish for the whole day so this kind of eliminates top water, assuming you're not going to use a top water lure the whole day. One lure in summer in Texas. Man, I would I would probably have to say like Slam Shady 2.0 on an eighth ounce uh, owner twist lock or hoss hook, weighted hook, uh, just because it's it's really, I, I love sight fishing. Summer uh, offers a lot of that. And I think the 2.0 for sure is the the best possible sight fishing lure. Uh, you can fish it early in the morning, you can burn it on the top and they will hit it on top. Come later on in the day when those fish are more lethargic and you really cannot be blind casting for them because you got to roll it right by their face. Otherwise they're not going to eat it. And that 2.0 is just so easy to see when you're sight fishing. It gives the perfect presentation that white works in both dirty water, tannic water, super clean water, whatever conditions you may have. I think 2.0 Slam Shady would probably be my optimal lure to use on an out an eighth ounce um weighted hook works everywhere works on all types of fish there's been i think there's like three insider reports over this past weekend where people caught like mondo like pb best bass using the slam sheet 2.0 and i think one guy was like shocked he's like i can't believe these work in freshwater heck yeah they do bass uh annihilate those things so we had a meetup here in Texas and the, there was a full slam that got caught by multiple people on this lure. I had, I, I had my first really good flounder day in a long time using the 2.0, just rolling it over potholes, letting it settle. And then it was like, damn, caught a 20 inch flounder this weekend uh, and a bunch of other ones that are a little bit smaller. 
uh, tons of redfish, the trout were all over it as well. I mean, it, it's literally the only, like, if you could only go out with one, I would definitely say 2.0. Love it. Tony, move on to you. All right. So I would definitely agree on the 2.0, Slam Shady 2.0. Uh, over where I fish in Florida, you know, Mosquito Lagoon, Indian River, Banana River, in the summertime, we do get a lot of that dirty water as well because of the algae blooms and we get a lot of water runoff. So the water dirties up. And I found that in the summertime, we also get these really sort of non-windy days as opposed to what we've been getting. Uh, you know, it could be dead, flat, calm out there. And using like a jerk shad, like the Alabama leprechaun, using that to really work an area, you know, you can still cover a lot of water with it and work an area thoroughly uh, with a jerk shad, even in dirty water. Because, you know, if you're fan casting an area, you want to cover every piece of little structure that you can. You know, if you see a little tree limb sticking out, make a cast to it. It's more of a subtle presentation, especially for those fish that a little bit more sluggish in the summertime, especially when the water is really warm and, you know, it's flat calm out there. Working something really slow can definitely help. And fishing, a, you know, like the paddle tail, like the Slam Shady 2.0, fishing it like a jerk shad, you know, casting it out, letting it sink, bounce it a couple times, let it pause. That can help too, especially in dirty water because, you know, it has that tail, adds a little bit extra vibration if the jerk shad's just not quite getting the fish's attention. That's good. Uh, Pat, what you got, dude? Pat, where are you right now, by the way? Pat is our... I am Pat. I'm actually over in uh, uh, Tony's neck of the woods. I'm in Coco right now, kind of back home. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's good to be back. You know, it's funny. I've been gone six months, and I come back, and it's like nothing happened. But water is a little bit cleaner here than when I left. So that's uh, that's actually a good thing. Good. A little more grass, looking looking pretty good. Um, but uh, you know, th this is one of the disadvantages of going after Wyatt and Tony because I completely agree with what they would say. Uh, that's my you know. My two favorites are the uh, the moonwalker, you know, a topwater lure, and uh, then whenever that bite dies off, is going to a paddle tail, and that 2.0 is is my absolute confidence bait. Um, you know, as you know, I've been you know driving all over the southeast and the Gulf uh, Gulf Coast, and that 2.0 has been producing in every single state, and uh, I absolutely love that lure. Matter of fact, I was uh, I was filming some uh, tips this morning in the Banana River. And I was skipping that 2.0 underneath some uh, mangroves, and uh, and sure enough, I had some follows by some reds. I couldn't get them to commit, but you know they were they were definitely interested in it. But uh, but yeah, absolutely. And those uh, those Haas Helix hooks, uh, that's been a game changer. I love those things. That that extra wide gap lets that plastic uh, slide down on it. But but yeah, I, I really um, yeah I really agree with what they're saying. I mean, I don't have much to add. And what Tony said about the um, when it's calm water, uh, going to that uh, that jerk shed, uh, that actually. Uh, is is a real good technique because sometimes that paddle tail when that uh, when that water is super calm fish can get a little bit skittish when they have more light penetration so going to something that is more subtle uh, even a smaller profile uh, that sometimes is the uh, the ticket to uh, to produce and then also you know uh, the med rig you know going down to a nub with that uh, mushroom jig head uh, that's all, all also a go to but uh, to answer the question if I had to have one I would have to say the uh, two point that would, so that would if, be my go-to if I had to throw it all in. Long. If you guys don't know, Pat is our full-time fishing coach who is traveling and living in an RV with his wife. And uh, they went all the way to Texas and then back and now going to go up to Virginia and back and, and fish the whole way. Mm -hmm. um, and yep. so you just got back from the Texas to back to Florida trip. What states did the Slam Shady 2.0 work in, Pat? Uh, the the 2.0 was a good size and everything, but uh, it seems like the Slam Shady color... Uh, worked better in uh, cleaner water uh, with grass. Now, once you got into uh, tannin water or slightly stained water, like, uh, um, you know, I don't want to offend anybody in Texas, but that that off color that they have there, uh, it seemed like the gold digger was really uh, a money color. Uh, I, I caught a lot of fish on the gold digger in Texas, and uh, that, one, uh, that one was great. And then the panhandle where I just left fishing with Matt up there, uh, the Fred uh, in, that, in that tannin water was just, uh, it was money. Uh, it was uh, that that was a uh, that was a great color. Uh, matter of fact, I don't know if I got a bite on a slam shady up there, uh, but the Fred, you know, every time I went out, we caught fish on it. So, so yeah, just as I think, if you got that uh, that gold digger, that Fred, and that slam shady, you're pretty much covered, no matter what uh, water clarity you're gonna deal with. Even in the Texas doo doo brown color, I think is what you're looking for. <laughs> 
Well, no, it's it, the, once you get past like uh, Houston, you get further south. It's like a greenish color. It's kind of it's kind of odd, but um, you know, it's not that it's dirty. It just has sediment in it. And uh, for whatever reason, I know the Slam Shady uh, works there, but that for me, the Gold Digger worked really well. I lived I lived in Houston, so I was a Texan Texan. I was a Texas resident for quite a few years, and I remember the first time I went to Galveston, it it was brown, like to the point yeah. my wife did not really want to pee in the ocean. Uh, and normally she has no problem peeing in, even in pools. She, you know, she'd be embarrassed right now, but uh, she's not here. Fortunately. Yeah. I think, I think Galveston is kind of where it starts. Once you get south of that, uh, you're, you're a little, little better there. Yeah. Cool. Well, now that you're back, don't take any of Tony's fish or he will put you in a headlock. And then all of a sudden we won't have Pat anymore. Hey, I, I'm just trying to keep up with him. I'm not taking anything from him. <laughs> I love it. All right, Richard, what about you? So Richard's up more in the Northeast and, and not meaning like not New York Northeast, but Northeast for kind of our, uh, our area. What's, uh, what's your go-to here in the summertime? Yeah. So I'm going to try and narrow it down because in the summer, there's so many different types of bait, but uh, two things that I kind of uh, go by is one is going to be size. Uh, and then the other thing is going to be kind of a little bit on color. So for me, the 2.0 gold digger would be the one that I couldn't live without that I would have to have. And again, like what Wyatt was saying in the mornings, I really like doing some sight fishing. The winds usually aren't as bad in the mornings. So you can get a lot of really good opportunities. And that 2.0 gold digger, especially on like a, the Hoss Helix hook is a really, really good option. Um, especially if you're around a bunch of oysters and stuff like that. But the other one that I have, um, is going to be the power prawn junior. Um, also a great sight fishing lure. Um, better for if it's a little bit cleaner water, like recently we're having a lot of rain. So I'm probably going to stick more with that gold digger color, but in the mornings as well, um, in the Southeast areas, kind of, or Northeast Florida, where I'm fishing a lot of the times, you know, I'm using a smaller profile bait kind of in those back creeks and those backwaters because those fish are a little bit more active in the morning time. But then as the day progresses, I'll start moving out to some bigger water and bigger bays or your sounds. And that's when I like using some of those bigger baits, such as the bomber um, and the full size power prong. Um, and those kill it closer to the ocean side. Those bigger profiles just tend to do a lot better. So it's really the same thing. I'm just moving to a bigger profile. But uh, and the cool thing about every single one of those, you can put it under a popping cord. Work. So uh, <laughs> that's why I keep those with me because uh, they they are always going to work under a popping cork. The cork so, man. Yep. Cool. Every time. Seventy percent of the time. Sixty percent of the time. <laughs> Matt and Heak, eight rods in the back. What lures do you got in the back? What's your go-to? Well, up there? Uh, well, um, I can tell you, going after all of these guys makes it really tough because they've kind of hammered away at everything. I want to say, you know. First thing in the morning, it's got to be top water, most definitely. Um, every day, I, doesn't, I don't care what the water looks like, I'm throwing it because in my area, Pat can attest to it. They will hit up top no matter what that water's like. They, uh, they will hit. Um, but uh, you definitely, it's just you got to dial in that cadence, that presentation. Um, but uh, after that, um, for sure, just like Pat said, for me, I don't think there's any secret. It is Fred the paddle tail for me every day, all day. Uh, that is the number one performer for me in my area. And the reason is, is because it's so versatile. Um, Pat even talked about the nub rig. I do that regularly. If I lose a tail, it does not come off of that hook. I'm still throwing it because I'd say 80% of the time I fish my paddle tails like a jerk shad anyway in my area. Um, so I, it doesn't it, it doesn't affect it at all because I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna fish it with a twitch twitch pause anyway or or you know throw some twitches into the retrieve, so um that Fred with my watercolor um is is money uh, absolutely money if I can uh, if I'm gonna do it with a nub rig uh, like Pat said that Z Man Pro Shrooms on a tenth ounce is is really good. Um, but being able to keep it with a paddle tail on a hoss helix hook, just like Pat mentioned, that wide gap really uh, allows you to stay buttoned up um, on, on a lot of those fish that, that may have had a chance at probably shaking that hook um, had, had it been a different hook. So those would definitely be um, 
my go-tos. And just like Richard said, I also am a fan of the popping cork uh, because like Tony mentioned, first thing, uh, our water can get a little dirtier in the summer months. You know, we're getting a lot of runoff and we're getting a lot of washout. And Pat was actually with me just recently and has watched me pull in some pretty good fish with these Fred paddle tails under a popping cork. So um, it's so versatile. Um, and, and I think it just works really great for me in my area uh, so well that uh, me and Pat have even named it the uh, lure to use in a local tournament uh, soon. So maybe the guys near me will figure out how good this lure really is uh, in this area. Um, because it just continues to perform for sure. And, and talk about your area for those not familiar with uh, the places you're fishing. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the Big Bend Panhandle area. Um, I'm from Tallahassee, so I fish uh, Panacea, Wakulla, uh, Steenhatchee, St. Mark's, uh, all the way to Port St. Joe, Panama City, uh, Carabelle. Um, I, I'll, I'll load that yak up and do some traveling, but um, you know, I cover a pretty good range of water and I can tell you in all of that, um, the Alabama leprechaun and the, uh, the Fred paddle tail are the two highest producing lures um, on a consistent basis for sure. Cool. And if you guys are listening, Matt was holding up 100 pack. I would highly encourage you once you find one or two of these lures, that are your confidence baits by a hundred pack. It'll save you tons of money. It's what every one of our coaches uses. Luke and I use every time we're out, I have my own little hundred pack. And uh, I know for Matt in particular, he uses it as a pillow. So it's so big. It supports your head and you wake up, your hair smells nice, like scented paddle tail lures. And oh yeah, I can smell it from here. Woo. So good stuff. Uh, Luke. I got a yeah, feeling, I'll, I got a feeling I know what you're going to say. It's going to be slightly different. Yeah. So I'll, I'll change that for daytime fishing. I agree spot on with, with what they just said for the exact reasons they just said where the water's going to be a little bit dirtier. I've been doing a lot of the 2.0s and then also the bomber as well. Just if there's bigger bait, bomber, small bait, 2.0. Um, but I've been doing a lot of night fishing. So I'll, I'll do like a little caveat for nighttime fishing. What I've been finding has been just absolutely amazing has been the power prawns these these original power prawns at night just like just this past weekend went out to catch crabs for tarpon fishing and there were a lot of crabs flushing out there were also a lot of shrimp in there as well and uh and so then we got it done with catching crabs i always bring a rod out and so i had some power prawns rigged up came up to a bridge first four casts got handled like legit fish caught a slot snook and then some smaller snook and jacks and stuff but they're just totally dialed into these shrimp, especially at night. And so, so this has been something that I'm even daytime fishing too, but this is something I bring every single trip. It has been awesome. Even went offshore, uh, or I should say near shore slash offshore of the weekend. And uh, that was doing great as well. Caught some grouper with it. I actually caught a mahi, my first mahi I've ever uh, caught out of the bay boat in, uh, in 50 feet of water, which is crazy. Um, and it was just, it was just getting action. So, so those power prompts have been, have been killer. Yeah, they're so versatile. What were you rigging it with? What size jig head when you're in 40, 50 feet of water? Well, for that, I have a, a, just a custom jig head that we're, that we're working on. It's a prototype. And uh, so it's a half ounce. And I, I, we're making some heavier for the deeper water. And so the half ounce, I had to let, I had to let you know, basically feed an outline just to make sure that it got down to the bottom. Uh, but once we get the, the full ounces, it'll be, it'll be good for up to probably 80 to 100 feet. But uh, so that's what I was using. But for the bridges, the bridges have been like 10 to 15 feet of water. And, uh, and just these hooks, this is one that's all, all pretty banged up. This is one of the, uh, the Z-Man uh, mag shrooms. And so you can get the heaviest ones, which is, I believe, three-eighths ounce. And uh, that's enough weight to get it down there in the bottom. But, uh, but yeah, it's been, uh, it's been killer. And then for snook fishing at, at, under the lights, like if you're fishing docks with lights, put this on a, put the same power prawn on a hoss hook, and they absolutely hammer it. It has a nice motion, looks just like a real shrimp. And they will absolutely just un unload on it. So, um, so yeah, for, for nighttime, those shrimp lures, at least lately, and it should continue, have been, have been absolutely amazing. Is there anything else that you would put on there? Uh, rhymes with juices loose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put, uh, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's without saying, right? Dr. Juice, I, I know I'm like, I believe in that. It's the inshore slam. 
uh, or the saltwater slam scent from Dr. Juice. I've now just been the biggest believer of, of scents ever. I used to not really think much about it. And now like literally all my clothes smell like Dr. Juice because I, I literally use it every trip. It's funny, you know, when we're out, a lot of times people will recognize us either on the water at the ramp and it's always slam shady and Dr. Juice. Hey, it's a salt. Remember those young guys was hilarious. They were in a small little skiff and like, you could tell they were like going through the bag as quick as possible because we were passing them and they're like, slam shady and Dr. Juice. We love it. I was like, that's hilarious. Uh, so funny. Just stuff keeps on working. Mm. Keep, I, I, what I love about this is it, it's the power of the simplicity, right? I've watched similar types of, you know, podcasts and videos like this, where you have six to 10 bass anglers on and every one of them says something completely different and it, right. And that's so sometimes confusing, right? Because one guy says this, and the next guy says something completely different. And you you're done. And you're like, all right, I don't even know what I should get. I guess I should just buy all 10 lures uh, where this was pretty consistent uh, across, you know, different States which is, uh, which is pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Um, anyone else have, you know, other things they, uh, like to use, uh, certain colors or any tips on, Hey, if this isn't working, right. Cause that does happen certain days, times of year where you're tried and true, your confidence lure, like a slam shady 2.0 or, or Fred just isn't working the way you, you want it to. What do you guys do? I've got one right here. This is like a staple summer lure and that's just a spoon because I talked about how much I love my soft plastics 2.0 is phenomenal but one thing you're going to encounter in the summer is all those little bait fish uh specifically pinfish that started getting a little larger uh they got a little bit more gumption to them and they're going to start taking the tails off of your plastics doesn't matter what you use whether it's you know 2.0s whether it's mirror lure paddle they will chew up all your plastics and if I don't want to go through a whole hundred bag uh, I'll switch to a John, uh, a Johnson spoon or an Aqua Dream spoon. They have a tough time taking a nick out of these, uh, but they will still catch a ton of fish. Only problem with these is uh, redfish aren't really great at hitting these and hooking up on the first try. So you have to make it a little bit easier on them with your retrieve. I like to just roll it and then give it just one quick bounce. Uh, also helps knock off grass. But as it's fluttering down, a lot of times it helps them just kind of fit it in their mouth a little bit better. Uh, it's, it's a little bit slower moving, but that just kind of quick half second pause helps those reds jump on it. I don't tend to catch a ton of trout on these. I've seen a lot of flounder caught on them surprisingly recently. Uh, on our, our trip yesterday with uh, all the insiders, we had, I think, two flounder that were caught on spoons. Really? So it's, you know, they, they can catch a lot of fish. I know that snook will hit silver spoons as well. Uh, I wouldn't say that there's a huge, you know, you have to use a gold spoon or you have to use a silver spoon. I've used bronze spoons, gold spoons, silver spoons. I'd say gold spoons, probably the one I gravitate to first. Uh, the biggest red I've caught this year was on a bronze spoon, uh, the silver spoons. I tend to use in the surf for, you know, just anything, but it's uh, it's, it's a tried and true lure that's been around for forever. And if your plastics are getting chewed up by puffers, if you're in Florida or pinfish in Texas, uh, whatever it may be, I would switch to a spoon so you don't burn through a bunch of them. Cool. Who else? Yeah, I'll, okay, throw, yeah. In, okay. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just throw in the, the top water. It was mentioned before, but if you if you like just the thrill of a fun strike and big strikes, top water is awesome, particularly in the twilight. So not so much when the sun's up and and your shadow is really bright, but uh, before the sun comes up and during it, this this top water has been awesome. And if you do use, if you do go top water, highly recommend the inline hooks. Something that I thought was a joke when I first saw it. I was like, why would I switch out trebles for inlines? It is. Uh, it has been just so much better, especially for areas like where I fish and a lot of the Tampa Bay areas. You know, Central Gulf Coast. There's a lot of seagrass in the summertime. A lot of the seagrass is floating on the surface and can be a nightmare with trebles. Um, and so we have the inlines. You, you snag less less floating debris, uh, safer for you unhooking the fish. And it actually does a good job of weeding out the lady fish and the smaller stuff that, that kind of are a pest. I've had many times those, those smaller fish that can't really get hooked quite as well uh, with the small, with the, the inline hooks and that bigger fish will see the commotion and think it's stealing an easy meal and it'll suck down that lure. And now you've got it hooked. So highly recommend top water, highly recommend inline hooks. Uh, our moonwalkers come with inline hooks and works great. So I recommend this one. 
But, uh, but if you have your favorite top water, put some inline hooks and I think you'll be really happy with it. Cool. What you got, Pat? For anybody that's uh, skeptical of uh, the inline hook. So my tip was going to be about top water, but, uh, you know, adding on to what Luke was saying, Matt and I just fished a tournament uh, last weekend where everybody had to throw the same exact lure. It was a top water, no modifications. Uh, we couldn't put inline hooks on it. We just had to pull it out of the box, tie it on our lure. And then everybody in the tournament was throwing this all day long. And the number one complaint from everybody that was in that tournament was missed blow ups and missed fish after they got on. And it's because of those treble hooks. I guarantee you, if we were able to switch those to inline hooks, not only would we have been able to hook those fish better, we would have got more of those fish in the boat. So anybody that's out there that's skeptical about the treble hooks, just try it. That's all I got to say is just try. You will get more fish that you connect with to the boat and not just worry about the ones that, you know, you're having problems connecting with. Once you connect them, that wider gap on that inline hook is going to hold on to that fish. Um, so uh, moving on from that, the actual tip that I had is if you're if you're fishing with top water, say you're fishing that moonwalker and you are just getting those short strikes, first thing you need to do is change up your cadence. That was actually uh, what I, I actually wound up winning that tournament. And it was because I was using a cadence that nobody else was using. It was real slow. If your cadence isn't working and they're still swinging and missing at it, then a real good thing to try is use a jerk bait with a weightless worm hook, uh, an extra wide worm hook that will allow that lure to sink really, really slow and fish in the same areas as those top waters. And what it'll do is this will be subsurface, but it'll still be at the higher end of the water column and you'll have definitely better connection with that. And what I would recommend is use a, a jerk bait that mimics whatever top water color that you're getting strikes on. So if you had the moonwalker, that white color, then a good comparison would be to use the uh, slam shady uh, jerk bait on a weightless hook. And uh, you can convert a lot of those swing and misses into hookups. That's good. That was good. I was going to say go something similar to that, Pat. I call it the bait and switch. Like if you're getting a lot of blow ups on top water and they're just not connecting, I'll actually just put that rod down and grab another rod. Top water will still be in the water. That, will feel, that way the fish will sort of stay close to it. Sometimes I'll pop it when I put my rod down. <laughs> But I'll basically just throw either a jerk shad or a paddle tail right where that top water's sitting, and it'll usually get hit by that fish that's following the top water. Bait and switch. Um, talk about retrieve, retrieval speeds, tempos. Uh, you guys all said something seems slightly different uh, with like the the two point type of a stock, a three and a half inch paddle tail. What are you guys doing? So for me personally, uh, again, usually when I, when I pull out the 2.0, I'm fishing for redfish. Uh, I find that redfish really key in on something that's consistently moving. Uh, if I'm sight fishing, I make a slight adjustment, but if I'm blind casting for reds over shallow grass flats, potholes near oyster bars, whatever it may be in that kind of two foot range, I'll say average, it's just a constant roll. And maybe once or twice throughout the retrieve, I'll, I'll mix in a pause, uh, not like a, a pop, just a pause, pause that'll let that lure kind of sink just a little. And that's similar to what I talked about with the spoon as that paddle tail's rolling. A lot of times those redfish will track. And this is just, if you, I would really recommend folks trying to sight fish, walk shorelines or troll really shallow. You learn a lot watching how redfish react to certain lures. You can really become a better blind caster trying sight fishing. You're not going to catch as many fish, but it is well worth it for the research you're going to get. And what I see a lot of times uh, is redfish will track on these paddle tails and I will maybe try and mix in one or two pauses throughout the retrieve, but the pauses take up time and you want to try and cover as much water. So I mix in a few just in case there's a redfish tracking at that time. But when I'm blind casting, it's mainly just a straight roll and it's about this speed right here. It's, the, it's generally the fastest I'm going to retrieve a paddle tail the entire year because the water temperature's up. Uh, the fish's metabolism is up. They have to eat a ton in the summer to keep up with it. So what's going to happen when I'm sight fishing is when I see a redfish, the best thing you can do is pull it right past the dinner plate, which is about a foot in front of their face. And then right when it passes by them, give it that drop or a pop, something that's going to change that lures kind of traction as it's going through the water, that difference in speed usually triggers that reaction bite. That's generally how I get a redfish to eat. Every time you just roll it right by their face. A lot of times they'll suck it down right when it's rolling past them. But if they don't react to it or they just kind of turn and look at it, 
give it that drop or give it a pop. And, you know, if you've got several fish you're going to encounter on a shoreline, you can test out what works best. But that's kind of how I go with, uh, with redfish. I'm sure some of the other coaches will cover other species, but that's mainly how I work the 2.0 in the summer. Who else has got tip retrieval? Yeah, for me, yeah, Wyatt was spot on with redfish. Um, and then a lot of the waters that I fish, a lot of times you can't even see the fish. You can just see the wake. So having that little bit of extra vibration with that paddle tail, a lot of times you can tell they really do follow it. Um, and they'll either hit it, you know, if you kind of put it right in front of that dinner plate or you just let it do that little pause, a lot of times they'll pick it up um, and they'll think they spook it. So, yeah, redfish, I spot on. And for trout, um, I really, really do well on and I did I do this during the fall and the summer. But anytime that lure is falling. So I really like using lighter jig heads a lot of times for trout um, just because it gives that the lure more time to fall and with a paddle tail it takes even longer um so even in the fall you know in colder months that's a good time to do it but in the summer it's still really good because in the summer a lot of times those fish do go deeper and if they have a kind of a simulation of a dying bait fish coming down they will smack it um, so that's a really really good technique i like to use and then the other thing is if i'm using more of a you know you got to think of what type of bait you're using if you're using like a shrimp like the power prawn Unless I'm fishing docks at night in current uh, under lights and things like that, I really like using a little bit heavier of a jig head that I know I'm going to be able to connect with the bottom. Because um, then you can kind of, one, make those little mud plumes or hit it on top of oysters. And a lot of times that's where those little shrimp are going to be. You know, they're going to kind of be on the bottom really until a redfish or a predator fish comes along and spooks them. Um, then that's when they'll jump and you get to see them kind of on that surface. But for the shrimp type imitations, I like doing a little bit heavier of a jig to have them on the bottom. But uh, unless you're doing like what Luke is doing, I love using a, a weighted hook like the hoss hook because you can throw those in a dock light and have them drift in the current and it is absolutely lights out. No pun intended with that. So lights out night fishing. I get it. <laughs> Another technique I, I, I used to use this a lot is called dead sticking and it's better with baits that have scent. So if you're using a regular soft plastic, have either Dr. Juice or something you could put on there to scent it up or gulp gulp, uh, gulp works really well. And, what you're basically doing is you're just casting your lure out and letting it sit for quite an extended period at a time. You know, it could be anywhere from 30 seconds up to five minutes. And when you let it sink, let it sink, sink down to the bottom. Once you're done waiting that however long it takes, give it one or two pops and then let it sink right back down. And this works best if you know you're in an area that has fish, you see fish around, you're spooking fish. Not really good for power fishing, trying to cover water, trying to locate fish. But for an example, a few years back, I was using a, a gulp jerk shad and I knew there were big redfish in the area. So I just cast it out, set it in the rod holder and I was doing something, rearranging something. And within about two minutes, the rod bent over and I had a 40 inch redfish on. So that can be a great technique too for fish that are very skittish, very sluggish. And they'll actually use the scent to hone in on your lure as opposed to, uh, you know, the action of the lure. So just another way to go after them that way as well. Good. Really good when it works. Really good when it works. Yes. Yeah, it, it does work as long as you're in an area with fish. It's just like when you're using cut bait or a dead bait, you don't want to just throw out cut bait, hoping there's fish around you because it could take forever or it may not catch any fish at all. So it's really more about being in the spot where the fish are, even if they're not very active, it can definitely get them going. Yeah, I remember seeing that insider report and, and you had the whole thing was videotaped. You cast it out and I think you were, you're setting up like a mullet rig or something. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you can see that you hear the rod and Tony looks over and his rods keeled over and the line shooting out. It was a beast of a red fish. That was really cool. I'll, I'll add one thing to uh, this retrieve and, uh, and it's in line with what everybody's saying, but but the depth control focus is that the depth control is crucial, particularly once the sun's up. And a lot of times in the summer, the, the fish will pretty much be on the bottom. In many cases, they'll they'll kind of shift out to a little bit deeper water. And if you're if you're not getting down there close to the bottom, you're not going to catch fish. And you can have the best retrieve possible, but if it's up here on the surface and the fish are on the bottom, they're probably not going to come up and eat. Uh, they'll probably will in the morning or in the twilight period, which is why top water is so awesome. But as soon as that sun's up, just make sure that you're that whatever lure you're using, whether it's the, the paddle tails or the shrimp lures, 
or whatever, just make sure that it's weighted properly so that you can effectively fish on the bottom. Most of the feeding is happening on the bottom, especially redfish. They like to pin their, their, their prey down against the bottom. And, uh, and if you're not there, you're going to be missing out. So uh, we, we actually have, if you need help doing that, we have a guide for matching the right weight, the right weighted hooks or the right jig heads for all of these soft plastics we've talked about. And you can go to saltstrand.com and just uh, use the search feature uh, for like a depth, depth guide, like lure depth guide. And you'll see it, you'll see it on there. Very helpful. It's a little printout you can even take with you. Um, it's such an important fact. We wanted to make sure that you, that you had all the intel you need. Yeah. We've had some people laminate it, take it out, keep on the boat. Smart. That's good. What else guys? Any, uh, any other cool, unique tips for, uh, for the summer? I know we'll have more podcast about this but we wanted to do one specifically just on lures and thankfully we did not pre-plan this uh it was all pretty simple right you, you don't you don't need thirty thousand different uh different lures and uh, even uh tomorrow we're going fishing with waiter day we'll be weight fishing and that's when you basically put just enough to fit in a fanny pack and guess what we're going to keep it super simple i'm going to take power prawn junior and slam shooted 2.0 and that's it. And maybe a bomber um, and maybe one gold spoon, uh, but that, that'll be it. And then some line and, uh, and we'll probably catch a ton of fish. Just keeping it simple. And you can find all this stuff at fishstrong.com. Insiders save 20% or more. Sometimes even some BOGO deals got all kinds of cool stuff happening this, uh, this summer for our members and, uh, and definitely check out the smart fishing spots system. It's a uh, man. It is the best tool I've ever seen for pre-trip planning to help you find new spots. And, uh, and now I'm using it for weather and radar and just the normal day-to-day -day stuff I was using anyways. It's, it's so cool. Uh, what else guys, anything else that, I, that we missed or uh, that would be helpful for summertime lures? I'll say there's probably one more thing. Uh, we, we all touched on top water being a great lure to use in the summertime. One final thing I want to say is that a huge mistake I see people do with top water is that when they get a strike, they don't, you know, they, they think, oh, either they didn't get the fish, they need to reel it all the way in, or they stop and they wait for the fish to come back. If you're not going to do that bait and switch method that Tony was talking about, uh, you need to keep working that lure. We've had a couple of videos on this, but I always like anytime top water is mentioned, I just see so many people not know how to follow up after a strike, they get surprised and they stop working the lure. But uh, just make sure you keep walking that dog because what's going to happen, that fish is going to keep shooting, looking for that bait fish that's going forward. And a lot of times I've seen redfish pass up a top water that's been stopped uh, and they're, they're looking for it, looking for it. And then they just, you know, they, they're forgetting about it. So if you don't keep working it, that fish isn't going to keep striking it. But a lot of times, especially with reds, uh, it's going to take to the second or third strike for them to actually get that top water down. But no, it's a, just make sure you keep working those top waters because now is a fantastic time of year to be using those moonwalkers and getting on a bunch of big reds and snook and trout um, early in the morning. I was going to yeah. say too, with most lures, you know, summertime, springtime, wintertime, doesn't really matter what time of the year, make sure you're working them all the way back to you. You know, I've had fish hit right at my feet sometimes because they'll follow the lure if they're being very finicky, very picky. And right when that lure gets close to your kayak or your boat, they think that food item is trying to hide and use that big vessel to hide under. And so they'll go after it right before it gets to it. So keep that in mind too. Redfish are like, these fish are literally jumping into that boat. <laughs> uh, it's good stuff, guys. Anybody else? Any final words? All right. Well, that sums it up then. Uh, summertime lures. If you have questions or opinions, thoughts, things we might have missed, things that you love using for catching our favorite inshore species, let us know in the comment section down below. And, uh, and as I said, you can find all this stuff at fishstrong.com. Insiders, make sure you're logged in to be able to see your discounts. And uh, we've got some really, really cool things coming this summer. So stay tuned, guys. Appreciate you. And we'll talk to you on the next episode. Peace. We out. Whoop, whoop.